In the American League in the late 1930s, is seen 39, a bitter circumstance for baseball, the departure of Lou Gehrig. At 16, he led his high school team to the Greater New York City Championship. Always in evidence, the famous Gary Green. In 1925, a rookie with the greatest team of the time, the New York Yankees. A team composed of many stars. Gary's first time up at bat, he hit a double and two singles. From that time, for 14 years, Lou Gehrig would be first baseman of the New York Yankees. Yet his playing ability took second place to his sportsmanship. For Lou Gehrig was genuinely a nice guy. A truly a gentle man. For many years, he played in the shadow of Ruth, the Phantom Star, eternally the Crown Prince, never the King. In a lesser man, resentment would have been routine. But uh, Lou Gehrig was not that kind of a man. But Lou knew his own share of fame. Though he appeared shy, there were times when he'd clown and carry on with the best of them. But mostly, Lou Gehrig played ball. Lou Gehrig. Lou replaced Wally Pipp at first base for the Yankees on June the 1st, 1925. The rookie hit 20 home runs, showing power and aggressiveness like this, and became an instant star. No player ever attracted more personal affection and admiration than the muscular ex-New York high school boy, who spent 10 historic years in the Yankee batting order next to Babe Ruth. With more than 1,200 home runs between them, they were the greatest one-two punch of their time, and perhaps of any time. The Yankee infield of the mid-30s, Frank Persetti, Fred Rolfe, Tony Lazari, and Lou Gehrig. Lou set a record that earned him the nickname of the Iron Horse. 2,130 consecutive games played from 1925 through 1938. During his career, Lou set more than 20 major league and American league records. He hit over 40 home runs five times, had 23 grand slams, hit four homers in one game in 1932, and batted in more than 150 runs seven times. His lifetime batting average was 340. When Lou played his 2,000th consecutive game, cameraman recorded the historic occasion. Lou Gehrig, first baseman, holder of the major league record for consecutive games played, 2,130. In addition, Lou could hit home runs, among other things, 493 of them in his lifetime. 23 with the bases loaded, a record. This was an extra one in the 1937 All-Star Game. Among the brightest stars was Larraping Lou Gehrig, the Iron Man of Baseball, a brilliant, record-breaking competitor, one of the immortals of the diamond. The husky fellow who shared the Yankee spotlight with the mighty Babe Ruth cracks the sports headlines. Lou Gehrig batting. In 1928 here, he's just pulled his first World Series home run. Ten years later, he's 35 years old when he hurdles the milestone of his 2,000th consecutive game, a record that seems likely to stand as long as the pastime endures. Unparalleled in baseball history is the spectacle which today enthralls 62,000 fans. For today in New York's Yankee Stadium is Lou Gehrig Appreciation Day, and the national pastime tenders him tribute reserved for sports immortals. Postmaster General Farley represents officialdom, then the Yankees of 1927, mightiest of all. With Wally Pitt, Babe Ruth, and Tony Lazari, there's Mark Koenig, Deacon Everett Scott, and Bob Musil. Herb Pennock is there, so is Bob Shogan, Benny Ben Gow, and Earl Coombs. But a greater pair than this, the game can hardly hope to see. President Ed Barrow speaks for the world champions, then stands in awe, as Garrick, visibly too moved to speak, summons the strength for his brief but stirring valedictory. The throng seemingly aware of some good Joe McCarthy present a silver trophy, a token of esteem from Gehrig's own teammates. 
after which the Iron Horse is prevailed upon to step to the microphones for a brief and final word to the crowd. Two weeks, you've been reading about a bad drag. Today, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. When you look around, wouldn't you consider it privilege? To associate yourself with such a fine looking man as is standing in uniform in this ballpark today. Nineteen twenty seven, Lewis Brothers, and I say that that was the best ball club the Yankees ever had. And I think he'll stay in there. My what I should think Lou would do, I don't know if the club is going to consider it or not, but my idea is to let Lou go up into the mountains. I saw a fishing rod here a minute ago. Let him go up there and see if he can catch every fish there is up.